Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to listen to your great presentations. Um, I've already learned a lot. So yes, yeah, so Anna cannot be here unfortunately because she's sick, and so I'm working with her here at the University of Vienna in uh, Zidarpe. Um and I will be sharing okay some of our uh, plans for this project. So um, I will be I'll let me start by outlining a challenge in, in this project which is um, that political polarization is increasingly straining democracies. Uh, at the same time, we are facing a challenge uh, in the climate crisis to reorganize economies and also the foundations of democracy uh, to cope with that challenge. And so um, we, we really need a lot of political trust and policies that resonate with citizens' political passions to engage with this problem. So. What we are doing in Sidape is um, that we are basically looking at emotions in the climate crisis. So that is the first um, approach. Um, and so what are emotions in the climate crisis? There are a lot of them, actually. So um, for example, citizens may feel patronized for not being able to say what they want, um, or for being made to feel bad for certain practices, such as driving cars or eating meat. Um, and then there's also increasing research showing that there's um, that there are specific climate emotions like climate anxiety, echo grief, or a sense of losing control. Um, and then also the whole sort of presence of climate activism in the public is also a case of sort of uh, creating emotional tensions. And climate activists know this, so they kind of uh, work with the codes, the emotional codes of majority society. And so we, are, we want to take up this position and focus on political emotions. And we conceptualize political emotions as both individual and collective, micro and macro, we've heard about this, and also embedded in social and cultural structures, in power relations, and gender roles. And um, we want to recognize the significance of political emotion as a tool to both, um, which can both foster polarization, but also um, in, sort of um, help to de- polarize and destigmatize. So we, we do not think that emotions are only sort of important in certain particular contexts, but that they are basically already embedded into the structure of political communication. Um, okay, and so the innovation in this project, um, and I have to say that my plan was originally to give you those little bullet points coming one after the other, but now you get the full slide, so it's a lot of text, but as you cannot see me, hopefully you, uh, the text is informative. So the innovation here is to say that we want to combine climate emotions with uh, emotions of inequalities, of socioeconomic inequalities. And why is that? Because um, we... we t pick up this literature saying that um, we know that in economic inequalities really affect democratic participation negatively. So they fuel distrust, even polarization, you know, people feeling excluded on the basis of economic uh, inequalities. Uh, at, the, on the, at the same time, we have climate change as a process that actually exacerbates these inequalities. Um, and a third point, and this is important because it's, and this is something that also the first presentation was talking about, and others of you have talked about this as well, which is that, in fact, people care about the material circumstances and the economic inequalities that surround them through emotions, such as pride, envy, rejection of envy, shame, contempt, anger, hope, or solidarity. And there's a literature within sociology, especially on sort of the emotions of how people process economic inequalities. Um, and so we want to think those two things together, so the climate emotions and the inequality emotions, and, and, and sort of see, also empirically see, how these two go together. And the question then is, how do people make effectively, sen make effectively sense of the climate crisis through climate emotions and emotions of inequality? And what are the implications for political trust and democratic participation? So this is um, our team here at the University of Vienna, um, but I'm going to sh uh, show you our consortium in a second. So just that you can see a picture of Anna, who is the coordinator of this project. Um, and then I'm in charge of work package four, which is specifically on uh, what we call climate boundaries, um, which is a um, sociological approach to, to everyday uh, 
um, polarizations and morality also really plays an important part in it. And then we have uh, here at the University of Vienna also a team from communication science. Um, with Fabian Lind and Harry Baumgarten, and Sita Zero have just joined us as our um, project administration here. So we have in total nine countries in the consortium and 11 organizations, uh, and some of them are uh, civil society organizations like the NGO People in Need in Czechia. Um, and so the way we designed this consortium was the idea was to have like a north, south, and east, west representation of this European um, issue. And here you can see our consortium partners. Um, I am also going to give you a list of names at the end of this presentation. I'm not going to go through all of them now, but maybe you also know some of them already. I, I guess you will. Um, but you can see we have our partners from Charles University in Prague, Metropolitan University, uh, from Estonia, the University of Tartu, in Germany, the University of Bielefeld, in Italy, the Scuola Normale Superiore, in uh, the Netherlands, Utrecht, who are, who are our experts on, on citizen engagement. We have um, a partner in Oslo, um, in, in Slovakia, and in Spain. And we also have a, a team combining political science, sociology, linguistics, international relations, communication science, uh, media studies and also participatory research. So the objective of CIDAPRE is we want to improve democratic action by understanding the force of political emotions in everyday contexts relating to climate change. And so we want to develop a conceptual toolkit around political emotions. Um, and, well, moving towards how we want to do this, um, and here you find a structure that some of the other projects also kind of, I, I saw a lot of parallels here. So we want to start at this level of the, the public, public sphere, basically public debate, public the policies, emotional narratives around certain policies. Um, our colleague Sonia Bloom in Bielefeld is also using uh, the narrative policy framework to do this. Um, then we move towards um, how citizens link the narratives to everyday life. Um, and this is where the symbolic boundaries, but also ethnographies. So in each of these group discussions, ethnographies, um, this is sort of how these links between policies, policies that are climate policies, but that all can also be interpreted and are in many cases policies that affect economic inequalities. Um, and then third, we want to analyze how these political emotions um, in, are involved in citizens' democratic action, how they shape political participation, um, and activism. Okay, just very briefly, um, but we have um, a, a number of uh, approaches in this project, but basically we were sort of um, structured around an interpretive approach, which is also an idea of political emotions, but it's not something that is sort of um, an individual property of individuals so much as it is a process. It's something that has imminent meaning, that is morally constructed, that is sort of relational. Um, and so we want to use this perspective and apply it in different levels. And we also use uh, Texas data and mixed methods approaches. So we're, because we have a strong focus on the discursive um, level, and we use participatory research. Well, we can talk more about this, maybe. Um, OK, just to give you an overview of our work package, work packages, um, you can see how the inequality, sociology of emotions, deliberated democracy, participatory research, sort of um, all um, coming to this, this, this workflow together. So I wanted to share with you some of the specific methods that we want to apply, because I also thought that this would be something that is particularly interesting for collaborations. Um, so on the left of here, you can see this the, the, the triad that I was talking about. So moving from emotions in political communication towards emotions and everyday understandings, towards citizen engagement. Um, you can see uh, the work packages and the methods that we're using. So we are, um, as I mentioned, our colleague in Bielefeld um, will be doing uh, document analysis, also working on the European parliamentary election, um, um, using the narrative policy framework, um, 
collaborating also with our work package three, which is our um, Texas data, sort of big data work package. But it's, again, also a combination of, um, we want to bring together the, the sort of the, the, the measuring text with digital ethnography. So very similar questions to what we just talked about, how we can actually use, well, we have Twitter data, we also, we are interested in um, in TikTok data as well, but also we are interested in memes and humor and how people sort of perceive um, those online interfaces in those digital ethnographies. Our colleague from uh, Spain is, is, is an expert in that. Um, and then we, we use interviews and focus groups. I, I mentioned this. Um, and here we have a comparison of four countries, Norway, Austria, Slovakia, and Spain, where we want to um, use similar methodology, interview and group discussion methodologies in those four cases and compare. Also um, using class-based sampling, um, so to have a, a, a strong sociological basis for, for, for researching people's I, climate emotions and equality emotions in these four cases. And then work package five is we'll be doing interviews and ethnographies, especially with a comparison of Italy and the Czech Republic. Um, and that is similar for work package six, but work package six has a focus on uh, activism, climate activism, again in Italy and in Czechia. And here the we, we developed this, uh, well, we draw on this idea of citizen expert panels, and then we have some experts in our consortium, especially from the Netherlands, who, are, uh, who want to further develop this idea of uh, citizen engagement and what they call um, alternative forms of citizen engagement, so which are um, especially focused around more dramaturg dramaturgical elements in which the emotions of um, of, of sort of talking about climate inequality and policies to mitigate it, then come out even in more, more strongly. So we, we thought about the okay, case so we need we need less sort of top down approaches in general, of course, when we talk about emotions. And then the idea is to in those citizen panels and um, to have to sort of integrate um, even more performative um, models into those. Um, those, those sort of tools. And as you can see, so the idea at Work Package 7 then was to, to have um, to, to also disseminate those um, those those findings, those citizen engagement panels and uh, in different countries. Okay, actually this is just another slide on the methods, but I wanted to show you that we're using the same similar methods across the work packages also. So and so we also we can also we also want to have a, a methodological debate among the work packages here. That's the idea. Um, so how is this going to improve citizen participation? So um, I mentioned that we have a work package of climate activism. So that is a major um, element of this whole idea. Um, so we want to understand how, people's, how people act on climate emotions and inequality emotions informs their sense of in activism, but not only in activism, um, but also in those more mundane everyday settings. Um, and then we have, as I mentioned, citizen panels. We want to hold them in work package seven and six as well. Um, and then this is also the, the, the main tool to, to sort of create connections to policymakers, artists, activists, stakeholders in different fields, uh, organize workshops. Um, drawing on models such as the theater of the oppressed, which I mentioned earlier, sort of more dramaturgical approaches to the citizen um, engagement um, models. And the work package seven will also create a documentary, so um, in which these emotions will be staged and can then also be analyzed to, to get a better understanding of how they affect the, the, the process of deliberation. Okay, um, yes, so maybe I, we can talk more about dissemination um, in the discussion. Um, I wanted to share also um, the networking opportunities since we're not uh, in, in Portugal with you. Um, I mentioned that we have a range of different disciplines and that we are also attending these disciplinary conferences and so that might be another uh, opportunity to, to actually meet up and, and, and and um, plan activities together. 
we are, we will have a, a project website very soon, and in social media channels, it is very likely going to be cigarbe.eu. Um, and here you can see, um, again, a few of, well, a few of the names of the people who are actually in charge of the work packages. There are more people involved, so this is not an exhaustive list. But so just that if you, if you recognize some names, if these are colleagues, um, maybe you can also get in touch and see that, um, kind of create, create these um, links. Okay, I think that's all from my side. And I'm, well, thank you also for bearing with me, even though I'm not in the room with you. And um, I'm looking forward to, to hearing from you and to, to working with you.